So currently Italy is a bizarre country at the moment and it just keeps on giving more and more <sighs> bizarre stories. Um, because you may remember uh, what last month reported on the fact that their health minister had sacked their entire medical advisory board. Well, it gets better. Because Italian health chief says he resigned over anti-scientific policies. Walter Ricard uh, Riccardi, I think that's how you say it, says populist government has had difficulty interacting with science. The head of Italy's national uh, health research organisation has said that he was forced to quit because of the anti-science policies the country's pop of the country's populist government. Walter Riccardi, the president of the National Health Institute, said that the government's endorsement of unscientific positions, particularly regarding vaccinations, was putting public health at risk. The League and the Five Star Movement, um, M5S, came to power last June with M5S leaders pledging to change law that made it mandatory for children enrolling in state-run schools to receive 10 vaccines. Matteo's, uh, Matteo Salvini, the leader of the League and Italy's Deputy Prime Minister, has said, uh, has said that 10 vaccines are too much. Riccardi said that in an interview with uh, Corriere del Severa, it is clear that when the Deputy Prime Minister says that he, as a father, believes that there are too many obligatory, useless and dangerous vaccines, it is not just unscientific, it's anti-scientific. He has also repeated claims that migrants brought diseases <coughs> that migrants brought diseases and were groundless. The government insists that the uh, waste to energy plants are uh, obsolete was nonsensical and that the decision to ease restrictions of the use of contaminated soils in farming was taken uh, was taken without evaluating the impact on health. He likened the government's approach to Trump's administration report recommendations for U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention to stop using the term evidence-based. It's an approach taken by populists who have great difficulty interacting with science, he said. The the, uh, his resignation in December came after um, Gerard uh, Gerard Gerudo, of the M5 um, the M5S health minister, sacked the entire board of Italy's Higher Health Council, which advises the government on health policy to quote, as she said, open the door to other deserving personalities. A new committee is expected to be selected this month. I will look for, the, for this. If anyone sees um, who they actually put on this board, please do let me know because I will be fascinated to see who they put on. Because this is just... I want to say it's like putting... This is what happens when you put idiots in charge. It really is. And especially when you put idiots in charge like this who are actually going to do serious serious harm because there is Italy leads the way in on va in in outbreaks in vaccine preventable diseases last time I checked at least and this again comes from a country that <coughs> like the UK prior to the um, MMR scare it very, very rarely happened. You maybe got one, two cases a year, and it might be just from one person. But other than that, that was it. You are now talking, you know, dozens to a hundred. And that is really serious. It is really serious because, as we've discussed before, many times, the danger comes if these viruses and, you know, decide to mutate and it becomes something worse or it renders the current vaccine completely useless thus exposing the entire population uh, to maybe I don't know as we've called it in the past super measles and like I say your complete vaccination is completely useless against that strain thus you now have to come up with a new vaccine which um, I believe the W.O. 
uh, has said this before, um, when we've read about it in the past, that would take roughly about six months. So the disease would run unchecked for about six months before you got a workable vaccine to be able to, you know, get it under control. So you can see this is a massive, huge issue. And putting people um, like the... Um, like the Five Star Movement and the League in charge with their anti-scientific... And this is not the first time. They have been openly about this. And um, there was a story a couple of weeks ago where, um, you know, doctors in Italy are hitting out and hitting out against these people, which is good, which is exactly what they should be doing. So, oh, and this is, this is it, yeah. M5S in the past has endorsed unproven cures for cancer and in the 2013 the party was a, a was a was an absolute supporter of stami of stamina of stamina I think that's how you say it a stem cell therapy provided by a psychologist that was later proven to be a con it boggles the mind it really does and these are the people that are in charge and now have the power to, you know, do some real damage. This is dangerous. It really is. And it's not just here. You look in the US recently, um, a 26-year-old, I think she was like a conservative news reporter, I think for the Federalist, died recently of flu and mumps, both vaccine-preventable diseases. And she heavily campaigned for um, anti-vaccine. She was an anti-vax supporter. So, <sighs> yeah. You know, it's depressing that the girl died so young, because obviously she was only 26, but she died from vaccine-preventable illnesses. And you have to put the blame on the parents, because they fell for this anti-vax nonsense, and then the entire anti-vax movement in the US. It's absolutely insane. <coughs> but it gets better because Guerrero, the uh, the health the health minister, uh, has caused confusion by making several U-turns on child vaccination policy. <coughs> and of course, this is one of the big things I've said about populists before. If you give them enough rope, they'll hang themselves with it. But the danger is, is do you put them in charge to be able to do that and let them cause the damage? But you have to admit that putting them in charge allows them to, put, to do that damage in the first place. However, the good point is that it will completely discredit them. And this is what's going on in Italy at the moment, not just in this area, apparently. Um... So she's made several new turns on the child vaccination policy. She first said that parents could self-certify that their children had been vaccinated instead of providing a doctor's note causing mayhem at the start of the school year. Then in mid-November, amid a measles epidemic, surprise, surprise, the government said that it would uphold the vaccine obligation and called for 800,000 uh, 800, infants children and young adults to be vaccinated. The decision was uh, made on the advice of the health committee, which was then sacked. I, I really don't know what to say to that. That's just absolutely, it, it boggles the mind. It just completely boggles the mind. The fact, the absolute utter stupidity I mean, the real the real person that, if I was Italian at the moment, I'd be calling for this person to be sacked. The uh, Gura, uh, I think that's uh, it's, it's a weird Italian name, Gialura Garulo. I think that's how you say it. I'm, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. But she, if I was Italian, I would be calling her to be completely removed from office. And then, at the next election, 
I will be calling out this and the damage that has been done and all the people in fact one of the best adverts you could run it against them is these are all the people and all the children that died from vaccine preventable illnesses and that this government said that you know their leader said that 10 vaccines were too much and were dangerous run the fact that he said that migrants were bringing in these diseases which again is completely um has been completely disproven you know the, that's that's how you beat these guys but there you go that's what happens when you elect populists sometimes they are complete and absolute idiots especially for what appears to be the right-wing ones by the looks of it.